Did you answer? I hope you're writing this very, this very critical. Church, I must ask you a question. Just one I must ask. I have no choice but to ask this. In your worship, huh? praising, service, prayer, church, does God dwell among you? Hallelujah. Because it says, when he dwells among them, they shall be my people. <laughs> Let us take a short break. I'll come back to explain. Yeah? And you know, I'm not telling you to do a particular thing, but I'm doing my things. Oh, yeah. Whoever catches it, that's yours now. Yes. You see that? We saw that Jehovah, when he looks at the earth, he looks at the world. He sees, he sees, he sees two groups of people. And one group he calls my people. Hallelujah. He does that. And the other are just others. And we saw that it's absolutely imperative. It's very critical that as a church, as a church, I'm saying this church, as a congregation, that we sought ourselves out to find out this standard, this benchmark that the Lord has raised called my people. Can we reach it? Hallelujah. And if we are to reach it, what does it take for us to reach it? Huh? To reach it. Hey. And we must. And what does it take? And then I began a journey with you. And we began to explore an exploration. On a discovery trail. To go and find good things. He says in this whole thing about my people. There are some identities we need to score. And one of them we found is that there is a book. And that book, that your name must be found written in that book. Somebody, did you hear me? I think, you know, for me, I think, you know, for me, eh? <laughs> he always say, but he's talking to them. Eh? Yes. He, he means them, not him. Eh? <laughs> for me, I think it would be absolutely tragic. For us to worship here Sunday to Sunday. January to January. And yet be shocked. Find out that our names are not written in the book. Hallelujah. And that's why I said. We rather begin a journey now. <laughs> before it's too late. And we saw the book. But in trying to understand the book, to get to the book, which book is this? Huh? And whose book is it? Huh? And where is it? That we may get and, and, and check our, you see, and, and, and check our name. To see if we can find our names written. And it was in the process of beginning to explore where does the book live? Where is the book? What book is it? We found, look, 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 look. The title. We found, look, look, look. He said, we found the title. He said, New Jerusalem. <laughs> Everybody's panicked at that moment. <laughs> they begin to understand that this is of gravity. Hmm? Is trying to raise you to the pulpit. Yes. Mm. 
Because this is a new priesthood. He has to instruct them. They have to move with the program. You see that? You saw last Sunday? Last Sunday he said, that whom the skill is given, those to whom oh, skills yes. were given, they come with the program. Yes. They just come and start wiring. You are saying, oh, nani, kwenda tukule kuku, nini? He say, he's not listening. He's just saying, excuse songa kidogo, tafadali songa. You know, he's connecting things. And that's what's happening here. You have come with instruction. You know where you're taking them. Yes. And I know where I'm taking you. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> he even knows. <laughs> And we saw, when we began to discover the book, the title, New Jerusalem. And I said, then they must be the inhabitants of that city. How many want to live in that city? And then they all the hands up. You see that? And it was in the process that we visited Revelation chapter 21. As he begins to do a preamble. Do you know what a preamble is? Uh, a preamble... It's like a form of an introduction. <laughs> Telling you of what to expect. You'd call it an abstract. A beginning. Like when you look at a newspaper. When you look at the headline. It should already tell you what's inside. And so in the introduction he said. He said. And, 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 and now. Now the dwelling of God is with man. When he found them. And he said, And they shall be my people, and I'll be their God. He said, I myself. Nobody heard me here. You tell them that. Nobody has heard me here. I said, He said, I myself. <laughs> you didn't hear that. He shake his head and move. You didn't hear that. Jehovah says, I myself will be their God. I will not send anyone. Where? Do you understand how he loves them? He says, and I myself will be their God. Myself, I will not send anyone. Where? And so, last week we broke out, we broke off at a place when I said that this week, this Sunday, I have a task. I have a what? What is my task? Huh? My task is to reveal to you today that we may discover what does it take for God to dwell among us that we may be called my people. Looking, my people. This way, my people. Hallelujah. Somebody focus here. He says that he may dwell. Do you know he's now repeating it? Yes. He says that he may dwell. Look. Checking my people. He says that when he sees, he says, now they are my people. What does it take? Somebody tell me. What does it take? And that's why today, I want us to slowly, you know, I don't want to take it very fast. I want us to slowly begin to walk through the journey of what it takes for Jehovah, the mighty one, to dwell among you. For that matter, turn with me right now to the book of First Corinthians. Oh, then, then like this, then like this, look. First Corinthians. Then, then, like this, he comes back. He said, listen, listen. Catch this. Catch this. He says, we are heading to the book. Which book? Where? Whose book? But along the journey, we find a characteristic. So don't get me wrong. We are still heading to the book. But for now, we have found a characteristic. He says, he must dwell. He says what? He must dwell. <laughs> and he celebrates, he says, now, the dwelling of God is with man. 
Now, the tabernacle of God is with man. So we are heading. We are getting the book. But along the way, I found a characteristic. Identity. Hey! Leo ni Leo! Yeah, you say that, eh? The panicking pens are falling, eh? But that's alright. You see that? So, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah! You, 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 know, you know many times you hear people say, I will leave no stone unturned. But this is it. <laughs> you understand? You're telling them, right? you want to bring them to the word. Yes. Yeah? When, when you finish there, you are probably two, three people who want to be preachers. Oh, yes. 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 They see the fire, the zeal, the gist, the fervence, the power, authority of preaching. Yes. They love it. Say, I want to preach like him. I want to have a zeal total like him. I want just to preach the word with all my heart. You see that? Yes. <laughs> you, you're, you're discipling also. Mm. Huh? And you know, your, 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 your sons can only be after your fire. Oh, yes. Yes. You understand that? Yes. So it can be fire, fire, fire. Yes. And love. love and so now, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 6. Turn with me there. And he says from verse 1, verse 12, verse 12, somebody, verse 12. Can you come back? Precious people, you know, I love the Lord for one thing. He does not just let you walk, browse aimlessly. He likes to put some title. Some what? Title. In my Bible, he says that we are going to find out. It's a small journey. We are going to find out what it takes for the Lord to dwell among his people. Among men. Did you hear what he added? Among men. I think you people need DVDs. Eh? So some people may get tired to write. Anyone tired to write? No. Not at all. Thank you. Right? Yeah. That question is to wake up people. So he says, as he begins to deliberate with you, you understand, <laughs> to conversation with you on what it takes for the Lord to dwell among us, the first thing he does, again, title. He said, sexual immorality. <laughs> that is powerful. That is powerful because I see, look, he say, red flag. Bendera nyekundu. He said, what does it take for the Lord to dwell among you? And the first thing, sexual immorality. Honor, bendera nyekundu. Hey, people in the church are panicking now. Those who are in sin now want to repent. They now want to begin to repent. Red flag. It's not hidden. He raises it. Yes. He said, red flag. Sexual sin. Now, stop. Huh? He says, stop. Red flag. He says, I can already make the calculation in my head. That he's saying, before I read, he's already saying that for God to dwell among you, sexual immorality, red flag. Red flag. He's repeating. Huh? Sexual immorality, don't. Don't try. Ha <laughs> ha. Leo Nilo, I said. Huh? You see, he has not read, but he has pulled out a feature. So he said, the word is alive. You can just look and you get a revelation. Hmm? And he says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. <laughs> My Bible says, everything is permissible. 
bon for me. But not everything is beneficial. Hallelujah. You did not hear me. He, he said, you did not hear me. He comes out to the high street. He's saying that there is a democratic space. He's talking about freedom. Somebody. He said, you have it. You got it. Do it. Do what you want. He says. He says. That my people is a church, is a congregation that is aware of her freedoms. She's aware. She's aware that she can do anything and everything under the sun, somebody. But he says, However, she is enlightened. She says, but not everything is beneficial. Hallelujah, you didn't get me there. You know you are telling them. You didn't get me there. In other words, he's saying that my people, they know their freedoms. But now, he's saying, look, that they are restricted. He said, they are walking the narrow road. I can go to the large road, broad road, wide road, big road, super highway. But, he says, I will just stay here. Because if I weigh out the benefits, she has weighed out. And he's doing his hand like this. That church has weighed out. And say, it's not worth it. Say, it is not beneficial. They are living their lives reserved. Hallelujah. And again, people, let, let me say this. I don't want you to get lost, he says. Did you understand me? The book. The names. Right? Number two. Coming to see what book we find must dwell among. Must dwell with them. But in exploring what it takes to dwell, we find some characteristic. That is for him to dwell. And he says, number three, sexual morality, no. No, no. He says, and he reads on, he says, everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. <laughs> Listen to me, somebody. He says, for God to dwell in a people, Lazma wawe huru. Did you hear what he said there? Mm -hmm. He must have freedom. He said, no slavery anymore here. I will not be mastered by anything. Meaning, sin will not enslave me anymore. <laughs> Sexual immorality. He raises it, somebody. He raises it. And he'd rather, he'd rather, you're telling them, he'd rather, see you? Because sexual sin has brought down the church. He'd rather, he had rather raise it. I am very happy with this scripture. You're telling them, you see that? Okay. Huh? Food for the stomach, and the stomach for food. But God will destroy them both. 